Hello again, everybody. Um, forgive all the background noise. Uh, we've got the air conditioning running today and the washing machine and everything, so uh, we have some background noise. But uh, I never realized what a can of worms I was going to open by building this little amplifier. I got a lot of uh, comments in a very short time, and it's just way too much for me to respond, so I thought it would be easier just to do a little follow-up video to try to address some of the questions. Um, the first question I got was, is it possible to add a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two speaker banana jacks, and can you show the THD on an oscilloscope? I've seen these all over the place versus my Macintosh MC7100. Well, first of all, uh, I will 100% say, do not use the word Macintosh <laughs> and this amplifier in the same sentence. Um, they are nowhere even close to one another. Um, and really the application is different. This is not a full-blown audiophile amplifier. It's an inexpensive solution for somebody who wants to learn how to put together a simple kit and wants to get uh, you know an amplifier that they could use for general purposes whether it be you know just to make a little portable speaker for your mp3 player something like that um, yes you can put a uh, an input jack very easily on this um, these three connections right here is left right and ground for your input and it's pretty easy to uh, you can either make a little header plug like I did or you can directly put the wires on the board and forego the header plug and just run that little co like a little three conductor coax you can cut off of a cheap pair of uh, you know earphones or something to get the shielded cable and just run it out to your jack um, the easiest way would be to just get a uh, you know like an like a headphone jack extension cord and just cut the end off and just solder the wires right onto the board. So that would be a very easy thing to do. Um, banana jacks, the same thing. Um, you don't have to put this terminal block over here. You can actually just, again, put the, wa the wires directly to the board and just run them out to your banana jacks. Very simple. Now as far as uh, THD is concerned, um, I was a little bit uh, curious too. Um, if we look up here, sorry for the shaky camera, and we kind of look at our signal here, which uh, I'm getting a lot of glare. I apologize. How's that? Better? Maybe a little better. Not perfect. But um, you can see the waveform up here. It looks pretty round. I mean, as far as... Uh, there, that's better looks pretty pretty good as far as the sine wave is concerned it's not perfect but what what does that equate to in terms of total harmonic distortion so I took the time to rig everything up and connect my distortion meter to this just to get a rough idea I normally don't bother with all this but if you look up here there's my distortion meter and I'm set to the 3% range so that would be this scale right here and as you can see I'm getting about one and a half percent total harmonic distortion uh, on the one channel so that should give you an idea you know at whatever power output this I'm right right before clipping which is on this amp with this power supply is right around 8 watts, 7 or 8 watts. So really, as it sits right now without any modifications, with the power supply I'm using, you can expect at 7 or 8 watts to get around 1 to 1.5% 1 distortion, which is not terrible. It doesn't sound too bad. And it does drop considerably when you uh, bring the power down. Um, so it's actually not too bad. I mean, you know, it's what you would expect from a low-end, low-cost amplifier. And just so you know, I'm touching these transistors. 
this thing has been running at at full power now for probably good 10 minutes with a sine wave on it which is a really kind of a brutal test for one of these and you know these heat sinks are warm they're actually pretty warm but they're not so warm that you can't keep your hand on it they're right on that edge if you had a, a nicer heat sink they would not even they wouldn't even work very hard so that's number one okay that was the first question let me shut this off now question number two bridge rectifier diodes look tiny I completely agree um, these are 1N4001 diodes and that's probably one of the most commonly used diodes out there and I can tell you with my finger on these they are actually physically warm to the touch so they are struggling right now and I'm sure that is adding to your total harmonic distortion a 1N4007 is only rated at one amp uh, of current and you know these transistor amplifiers I mean you have two channels you're driving with this one amp is you're going to exceed that so what's that mean that means you are really putting a big strain on these little diodes if you were going to build this for real and you were going to use this and you were going to run it close to its rated power this is a poor design it's not enough um, you know for a cheap thing that you're just going to listen to it at, at you know a couple of watts volume it would be fine but if you were really going to try to get everything you could out of this the components that come with this system are not ideal okay what do you expect for eight bucks and a lot of people get on the comments and they rag about this that and the other thing it's ch Chinese junk this and that it is what you pay for and again for somebody who is just learning this hobby who is, has not had a lot of experience building kits this is a very easy one to assemble the instructions are pretty easy um, it's easy to tinker with you can swap out parts on it very easily um, and it does as you heard it sounds pretty good as it sits from you know if you just put it together as is it doesn't sound too bad now I did have to change the capac these two little capacitors here and here and I did have to modify those two resistors these uh, R9 and R18 uh, to get rid of a little bit of crossover distortion which would have added to the THD I'm sure um, but you know th those are two cent parts you know they're very inexpensive uh, so it works but it could work better uh, and it wouldn't cost too much to make it work better the first thing I would do is I'd put some larger capacitors I'd go with you know maybe 4700 microfarads instead of 2000 and for these I would use bigger diodes um, they make you know they make 3 amp and 4 amp diodes um, you can see here these are way overkill they're uh, 400 volt 6 amp okay and those are a uh, let's see a GI 821 okay so I mean you could you could go to something like that and they're not real expensive it's a couple of you can order those online for a couple of dollars um, you can buy these I buy these in bulk these are 10 amp uh, the only downside of that is they would probably be able to fit on the board but you would have to um, maybe open those holes a little bit bigger you'd have to be very careful to do that um, but there are also three amp diodes and I have some I just don't feel like digging them out right now that um, well here they are these are the, the three amperes which is more than enough for this little amp I think a um, lot more substantial these can be had for pennies a piece and that would solve your problem okay so 100% I agree with that the power supply is underrated for the capability of the amp um, next 
if you connect a variable power supply will that crossover distortion go away um, okay well if to find if you find the sweet spot they're pretty much what they're saying is if I varied the power supply rails the plus and minus throughout the range from maybe plus and minus 12 volts all the way up to plus and minus 30 volts all the way through and monitored the the uh, crossover distortion would you be able to find a spot where it would go away well believe it or not I did do that um, when I was working with this and what I found was although it would make some difference at the extreme ends it didn't make very much difference at all um, the problem wasn't really what power it was idling at it was the actual biasing of the transistors um, and so that you know you want to turn them on just a teeny tiny little bit so that uh, just the right amount so that you never go down into that nonlinear region of the transistors. So really, even though yes, that will make a difference to some degree, it did, it did not, through testing it, it did not eliminate the crossover distortion. It minimized it, but it didn't eliminate it. What eliminated it was replacing R7 and R18 with the proper value of resistor okay um, if you play with R8 and R19 I recommend leaving those as is because uh, when the closer you bring this base to the rail it's actually gonna it will get rid of the crossover distortion as well but it will also idle this transistor way too high and it will cause um, cause this transistor here both of these transistors to overheat so uh, going with the 470s in here really helped me and you may you know I don't know I have this is the first one of these I built I don't know the consistency of these because these are obviously made with very inexpensive surplus components that they ship out with them so I don't know how consistent they'll be from one amp to the next I did purchase a couple of them so I am gonna play around a little bit because I'm interested in this to see what we get out of it but anyhow to answer your question no adjusting the, the voltage did not hundred percent eliminate the crossover distortion uh, is it possible to reduce the very high gain of the amp by modifying R6 or R5 okay so we're looking at R5 here okay and we're looking at where's R6 um, am I missing it? There's R5 is right here. R6 is right here. There you go. And yes, you can adjust that and you can mess with the gain of the, of the uh, front stage. You can also do things like changing this capacitor here. You could put a uh, you could put a bigger resistor divider here you could put a pot in front of you know in front of this to attenuate it which is probably what I would rather do um, but what I've found is there's a reason why they put that high amount of gain on there and the reason is that what I found is your standard mp3 player like your cell phone or your little handheld mp3 the real cheap ones you get it wherever they typically do not have a true line level out um, some of them do some of them don't but what I found is they work a lot better if you have a little bit higher gain at the front end and that's why they do this remember this was probably built uh, or designed to be used with that type of device now if I was going to put this in a line stage building my own little uh, homebrew stereo um, yeah I probably would maybe to you know just to eliminate noise and hum I would probably lower the gain of this a little bit but as it sits it's not bad and if you put a volume control in the front it would uh, allow you to adjust it however you want you could put your signal generator into there put a, a known value um, you know your one volt peak to peak or whatever you want and then you could uh, adjust it down to what you till the output is correct and that would work so that is a short answer to that okay 
Next, I have seen fake TO3 case transistors that actually contain a small signal transistor capable of only one amp. I would have serious reservations for that price. Usually TO3 audio grade transistors cost at least $10 US a pop. Um, that is, yes, there are, there are knockoff transistors that are fake and you really have to watch that especially when you're ordering things overseas remember in China they just put things together a lot of things are built to cost they want to sell mass quantities at low price um, if you're gonna take a risk and buy something like that and you're not gonna go to a reputable parts house to buy these things just know that what you, what you pay for is what you get now if you don't care if you're looking at things that you're just using, you know, you need a switching transistor, you need some whatever, uh, yeah. But uh, these ones seem to work like a regular 2N3055. Um, yes, the big heavy TO3s can cost in the 10 to $12 range a piece, um, but I found that uh, even at the parts houses now, if you buy you know a quantity of 10 transistors at a time or something, I have purchased some pretty substantial transistors, uh, you know, for as little as a couple dollars a piece. And the 2N3055s, it, sometimes you can really find those at bulk. You got to understand these places in China are huge. I don't know if any of you've ever seen or read about some of these places, but they literally buy hundreds of thousands maybe even in the millions of these at a time and they mass they're mass produced and sometimes these parts are surplus from you know from a from a run of production and they just want to get rid of them and sometimes you can get good components at a very low price but other times it is a sham it's a it's a rip off you're getting you're not getting the correct component it's junk I agree difficulty is figuring out which ones of these things you buy like this are true surplus good components and which ones are garbage components you really don't always have a way of knowing that so so yeah, buyer beware that's all I'm gonna say if you're willing to take the risk you'll find out that sometimes you'll win and sometimes you'll lose and when you do win sometimes you can really save a lot of money so again that's a choice that you make yourself um, but yes I, I do I, I have seen that <laughs> these ones however seem to be pretty good they work okay would it be possible to make a video showing how to add a volume potentiometer to this or any bare bones amp board um, it's a very simple process to do that um, so in your input in its simplest form you could actually just take your potentiometer I know I'm off the shot right now I'll try to get you in here and this the top part would go to your RCA jack right and the bottom part would go to your ground and then the output of the potentiometer would go right up to there okay um, so basically all you're doing since you have this coupling capacitor in this circuit this is how you would do it now you gotta watch on tube amps and on some of these direct coupled amps that don't have the coupling decoupling capacitor I should say you don't want to necessarily when you turn this pot all the way here you're putting this pin to ground and that could affect the bias of the transistor in some circuits but in this particular case you're just fine and if you bring this down to here that would turn the volume off if you bring it up to here it would essentially take this out of the circuit because this is would act as a very high impedance and we'll talk about that in a second and it would just connect the device directly to the input for maximum volume now the only thing you have to remember is what size this potentiometer can be um, and you can mathematically figure it out uh, or you can just experiment with a couple different values typically you see much higher values on tube gear because tubes are more high impedance devices so if this were tube it would be maybe 500k 1 meg something like that 
in you know in a transistor device like this um, 50k is a good starting point although there you know there's a lot of extenuating circumstances but typically if you put a 50k potentiometer or even a 100k would work it's not super critical the idea is you just don't want it to be so low of resistance that it lowers the input impedance and your device can't transmit its maximum signal when you have the volume turned all the way up that's really all you care about so other than that this simple little signal is or circuit is all that you need to put a pot into this device and again this is a good way to trim up your input if you have too much gain um, you can always bring this down a little bit it acts like a little voltage divider and you can put your line level device into this amp and it will work just fine okay uh, the biggest concern that people have now again we're getting into higher end gear versus cheapy stuff that people don't care about um, is the more gain the input has the more susceptibility to noise that it has so that would be the only downside of doing this rather than redesigning the circuit okay hope that helps um, the parts list on the eBay link you gave us also shows 100 picofarad ceramic capacitors and yes it does the schematic and even the board you know but the board says 103 and the caps were marked 103s which I don't think mean anything all I know is I put a proper 100 picofarad in there and it got rid of all of that oscillation um, if this value is not correct you know if this value of capacitor is not correct here let me get you in the shot here uh, what ends up happening is you you will get a little bit of parasitic oscillation so you'll see your sine wave but at the peaks and valleys of your sine wave you'll see little noise like a little noise fringe on there and it's because it's oscillating and this that suppresses that okay okay uh, another one I'd love to see some distortion numbers um, as you can see crossover on a one kilohertz wave so again um, and you might just get about 10 to 12 watts per channel into a 4 ohm load with a south wind behind you um, yes that is true now let's talk a little bit about the, the what he said um, first of all we would looked at some of the distortion numbers and it gives you a rough idea 1% in a high-end audiophile amplifier is absolutely horrifically terrible 1% on your standard off-the-shelf uh, retail big box store stereo or radio is average and really for the average listener you're not going to notice it um, so take that for what it is each person has a different ear and a different opinion on that um, I personally cannot hear the difference when you start getting to less than 1% distortion I have a very difficult time even when I'm trying to imagine myself seeing it I can't hear a difference between 0 0.02 and 0.05% distortion things like that it kinda at some point in time diminishing returns by bringing it down further um, this one looked like it was about 1.5% at rated power or at maximum power I should say not rated power this thing can't even go near 100 watts we know that um, so yeah it's not bad and I agree if you put a 4 ohm load I'm testing this on an 8 ohm load okay a lot of these low-end stereos will use 8 4 ohm speakers to get a little more volume out of them why is that well it's because of ohms law um, when you put lower resistance across those terminals and you apply the same voltage Ohm's law tells you that the current is going to go up so if the current goes up current times volts is watts your wattage will naturally go up and you know when they call a speaker a 4 ohm or an 8 ohm speaker or whatever ohm that's a nominal impedance but with frequency that re that resistance value or that impedance value will change with frequency so but when the when the overall voice coil is lower impedance yes you will get a little more power and I bet the 4 ohm load on here as it sits 
it would get more than that seven or eight watts. It would probably get closer to 10 or 12 watts. So he is 100% spot on with that. Um, the other thing is sometimes the distortion value will change a little bit by doing that. But, uh, you know, again, it depends on the circuit. Okay. Um, let's see. I would double the rail voltage to plus or minus 30 volts. I did run the rail voltage up. This, These little tiny transistors are just not capable of handling that. In order to do that, you would probably need to increase your, you know, put beefier driver transistors and so forth. You may have to change some of the resistor values. This thing's really happy when it's plus and minus 18 volts. Up to about plus and minus 20 is about the limit of what I found this thing ran cool and comfortable at. Um, let's see what else. Uh... I think that's most of it. Oh, you are right about being suspicious about the 100 watt. We installed a 100 watt amplifier into an arena and it took two guys to carry the thing in. It could lift the roof off that building. Great vi video and I'll order one myself for a fun build. And really that's the way to look at it guys. This is not a 100 watt amp. Um, a, two, a, a real 2N3055 transistor has a maximum dissipation rating of 115 watts. And I guarantee you, you never want to do that on them. It gets so hot. It, mm. Two 2N3055s in a correctly designed amplifier with all the right things going on, you probably would not want to exceed a 30, 40 watt rating somewhere around there. That's where I would be comfortable. And you could push it to a 50 watt amplifier, but I wouldn't go beyond that. Even though you could, I wouldn't. Okay. So realistically, a cheap, uh, no brand name 2N3055 knockoff transistor that's correct, not not one that has a signal transistor in it, one with a real piece, the right silicon in it. I would say I wouldn't push this beyond a 15 watt per channel amplifier. Okay. So. When you buy these, don't expect more than you're going to really get. Expect a 10 watt amplifier at best if you do all the right things. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of information about this. I hope this helps you guys out and answers your questions. And uh, you know, for people just getting into the hobby or for a time waster thing, something to do. Um, or have a platform to experiment with, I think this is good. I mean, even just the blank circuit board is not a bad little, you know, it's pretty good quality. So just the board, you know, that you get out of it, plus some of the, you know, the resistors are all metal film. They're decent. And when I measured them, they're all super accurate. Um, really, if you took took out the capacitors and took out the, the silicon, you know, the transistors, uh, basically the semiconductors and capacitors, if you threw those out and you put good ones in here, you could probably make a good amp out of this thing and still be very inexpensive. I mean, you could buy these good versions of these parts for under $20, I bet. Uh, maybe $20 or so. Um, so anyhow, that's, uh, that's my opinion on it. And again, don't when you build this don't have any preconceived notions that are you know that this thing's any better than it is it is what it is it's a cheap kit and it's designed for low cost um, the transformer is probably gonna cost you more than the kit <laughs> even if you bought the extra components to do a better job you're still gonna you're gonna drop between twenty and thirty dollars on the right size transistor or transformer for these and uh, that's just the way it is. This one here is too big for the amp. Um, right here I'm using a 36 volt, the triad. There's also a VPS 28-6250 and it's actually rated at 28 volts center tapped with six, six and a quarter amps of current. That would be the, the sweet spot uh, transformer for this circuit design. 
and you can buy those online there's lots of places you can find them and they're I mean like in the states you could buy them places like Mausers and DigiKey and so forth but even eBay sells them um, there are other Hammond and other companies that make them but for the price uh, these are pretty decent transformers and they're pretty good I found I've had good luck with them in the past so uh, but like I said you're gonna drop 30 35 bucks on that <laughs> for your eight dollar amplifier and then you're gonna buy some more parts to use better components so this whole project eh, between fifty and seventy five dollars if you wanted to do everything right and this next one I'm gonna build I'm probably gonna build another one just for the heck of it and put good components in it and we'll see we'll see what it does so I hope that helps you guys I uh, hope I didn't take too long and waste your time here but uh, till next time have a wonderful day and thank you for watching